In our discussion today, we're going to be looking at uh, calculating the change in enthalpy of a reaction. And you might remember from an earlier discussion, we said that change in enthalpy is uh, taking the symbol delta H. The delta means change in something, and the H is short for heat, or at least the very special type of heat that we call enthalpy uh, in, in chemistry. Well, the equation that we're going to use to do this is this equation right here. Now you need to take note of that, uh, write that down. This looks like a very uh, complex equation, but actually it's not as hard as it looks. The way to find delta H, and that's what we're trying to solve for right here, is to take, now this kind of a scary looking symbol here is actually the Greek letter sigma. And sigma just means the sum of the heat of formations of all the products minus the sum of the heat of formation values for all the reactants. Now this looks like a pretty uh, difficult equation, but after we do a couple of, of examples, hopefully you'll see that it's really not that difficult. And when we get an answer for delta H, you'll find that whenever the delta H value is negative, so whenever delta H is negative or, or less than zero, that means the reaction is exothermic. And you might remember from our discussion a few days ago that exothermic means that it gives off heat, or if you put your hand next to it, it feels hot. Uh, the other possibility is that delta H is positive. So delta H could be greater than zero or positive. And if that's the case, the reaction is endothermic. And as you might remember, endothermic means that uh, if you put your hand next to it, it feels cold. So it absorbs energy from the surroundings. Uh, just by way of review, you might remember that the reaction profile for an exothermic reaction is roughly going to look, whoops, is roughly going to look something like this, okay, where the the products have less energy than the reactants. Whereas endothermic, very roughly, is going to have this type of an energy profile, where you end up with more energy at the end than you have over here at the beginning. Now, in order to do the examples, you need to take out your table of standard heats of formation. Uh, you have that on a, on a half sheet of paper, hopefully, or if you don't have that, you can look those up uh, in, in a book. But uh, these are on a nice handy table for you, the heats of, uh, heats of formation in three uh, columns that I've uh, prepared for you. And so you'll need these uh, constants in order to solve these problems. So here's the first problem that we're going to do. Uh, we have, we're going to find the delta H value of uh, water liquid is going to turn into two moles of water and uh, one mole of oxygen. So in order for me to uh, let me change the the pen color here so we can actually see what we're doing, we're going to uh, start by looking up the heat of formation values from the table for each one of these substances. So water, the liquid form of water, if you look at the table, you'll find that its value is negative 285.8, and that's kilojoules per mole. That's the unit it's given to you in. Now, you'll notice that since there are two moles of this substance, we actually have to multiply this value by two. And so you can take a calculator and see what that's going to be. 285.2, whoops, 285.8 times two. And that is a total of negative 571.6 kilojoules. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for hydrogen uh, gas, and if you look on your chart, you'll notice that the constant for that is actually zero kilojoules per mole. Okay, uh, now we do have two moles of that, so we have to multiply it by two, but as you know, anything times zero is still zero kilojoules. Okay, if you look over here for the constant for oxygen gas, it also has, in fact, it's the last one on the chart, the very end of the 
table there, its value is also zero kilojoules per mole. And we only have one mole of that, so we really only multiply it by one, but of course that's zero. You're going to find that every element in its most natural state is going to have a heat of formation value of zero. If you look at the table there, you'll find that there are at least half a dozen elements there in their most natural state, and they'll have a value of zero. Now the equation is sum of products minus the sum of the reactants. Well, there are two products here, and if we add those together, zero plus zero is zero kilojoules, and there's only one reactant over here, and so the sum of that is pretty easy to calculate. And so delta H is going to be equal to the products minus reactants. So that's zero kilojoules, the product value, minus the reactant value, negative 571.6 kilojoules. And we know that the two negatives make a positive, and so when you do these, uh, the mathematics here, you get that the answer is positive 571.6 kilojoules. Okay, so that's the answer. And so that's all you have to do. It's just the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. Now the fact that this is positive tells us that this is an endothermic reaction. Okay, that's what the positive indicates. So what this is telling us is if you take two moles of water and break it down into two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen, you're going to absorb about 571.6 kilojoules of, uh, of, of energy. Now let's try one more example together and see how we can do with this one. Here is an example where we have two moles of C2H2. That's called acetylene. And we're going to add that to five moles of oxygen gas, and we're going to get four moles of carbon dioxide gas and two moles of water vapor. That's a gas, of course. So we're going to use these standard uh, heats of formation from the table that you have in front of you. It's the same process. Products minus the reactants. So if you look at the acetylene value here on the table, it's uh, actually positive 228.2 kilojoules per mole. Now, do you remember what that 2 means? It means you have to multiply this by 2. So when you multiply that out, it's 571.6. Whoops, that's not the answer. That was the other answer I had. It is 456.4. Positive 456.4 kilojoules. Now, the value for oxygen gas, you might remember from our last problem, is zero kilojoules per mole. And the five here means we multiply that by five. Of course, it's still zero. Now, carbon dioxide here. If you look at the value for carbon dioxide gas, that is negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole. And do you remember what the 4 means here? Yes, we have to multiply that value by 4. So on our calculator, we can key that in, and we get negative 1,574 kilojoules. Now, water be very careful here because there are two values for water. In the last problem, we used the liquid value. This time, we're specifically asked for the gas value. So water in its gaseous form has a heat of formation of negative 241.8 kilojoules per mole. And we have two moles of that, so we have to multiply it by two. And so that gives us a total of negative 483.6 kilojoules. Now, what do we do at this point? Well, we add up the reactants and we add up the products. And we're going to take products minus reactants, right side minus left side. So 
reactants would be, that's pretty easy to add up, it's 456.4 kilojoules. On the right side over here, we might need a calculator for that. The answer I'm getting is negative 2057.6 kilojoules. And as you should remember from the equation, delta H equals the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. So right side minus left side, that's negative 2057.6 kilojoules minus the 456.4 kilojoules. And so when we plug that into our calculator, we key that in and I'm hoping you're getting the same answer as I'm getting, which should be that delta H equals negative 2,514 kilojoules. So you ho should remember, hopefully, that that negative value tells us that this is an exothermic reaction. In fact, it's extremely exothermic. Now, that helps us to explain why C2H2, which is called acetylene, is used in welding torches. Very useful because it gives off so much heat and so much energy. So acetylene, you know, with two moles of acetylene and five moles of oxygen, you give off four moles of carbon dioxide gas, two moles of water, as well as 2,514 kilojoules of heat are given off. That's just a huge amount. Well, at this point, you should be able to work the problems on your problem set, and so that will be your assignment at this point. Thank you.